got started watching in the first place. Yep. All right, guys, so we have got the next game here. Excuse me, the scoreboard is incorrect at this moment. I got you. So go ahead and do the announcement for the players while I update that scoreboard. We are going to have Slayer's Boxer, the one, the only, our Blue Terran in the top right-hand corner of Shakur's Plateau. And his opponent, once again, a Zurich, or another TBZ rather, is going to be FXO's Lucky. He's going to be in the top left-hand corner. Shakur's a map in TBZ that can certainly go either way. I used to think when I first started playing the map a lot that it was Zerg favorite just because it's such a big macro oriented map, but mm -hmm. actually through experience and once Terrans learned the map a little bit better and learned how to abuse these cliffs in mid, um, you see a lot of players put siege tanks up there in mid. It's a, it's a pretty good map for Terran. It's really not that bad. Absolutely. All right, well, I've got to do this pain user. If you guys want to make some noise for FXO's Lucky, let me hear it. And if you guys want to see the Terran Emperor win, Slayer's Boxer himself, make some noise! Oh, well, there it is. We've got Slayer's Boxer versus FXO Lucky. The score is currently 0-0. Zero to zero. What do you think we're going to see in this game? Well, the, uh, the, the Terran players that we've seen so far today uh, really like to hide the racks thus far. We've seen yeah. it in almost every game. They're just kind of hiding the racks in an obscure location, maybe to throw the Zerg off. Yeah. Uh, if the Zerg comes in and he scouts gas like this and he doesn't see where the racks is, and it looks like, oh no, the drone does actually see that racks on the way in, so Boxer maybe wanted to hide that a little bit further to the right. Uh, I'm not sure, but First Marine is on the way. Yeah, interesting. The barracks, once again, as you said before, being placed on the low ground, that we are going to have a pseudo supply depot wall at the natural to the main as well, as Lucky pulls his drone out of there. Now, Lucky did open up with 15 hatch. We've seen time and time again on this map how two barracks aggression can be very effective against a Zerg player, and we'll have to see if Lucky's prepared for it, and even if Boxer's going to go with the second barracks. The nice thing is, he put the barracks on the low ground, and immediately when a Zerg scouts that, they think, hmm, probably going to be a two barracks. That's why the Terran decided to throw that barracks on the low ground. So right now, Lucky's probably imagining there's going to be a two barracks coming, but Boxer actually went right into factory. Well, Lucky did see the gas, though. That's so true. he has to know that Boxer's up to something, whether it be a Reaper or a quick factory. Mm. Um, you know, he has to have a hunch. He will maybe re-scout that. He might actually just invest in some, some early lings. Spawning pool about to finish now for him. And... Boxer gonna add a reactor onto the rack, so he's gonna mm. open with reactor Hellion as well. And I love this opening from Terran players. It just gives you so much map control. You can get those quick four Hellions out. Some players even going up to six. Yeah. And it looks like Boxer's actually gonna grab the a single the Hellion ground. before swapping onto the uh, reactor. Hmm. He's gonna grab the command center on the low ground as well. It's certainly a little bit more vulnerable, but uh, he's gonna have a second supply depot wall at the front as well, so it's kind of like a double layer wall in case the Zerg player floods in and gets by the first um, the first line. Now, uh, it looks like, as you said before, that first Hellion is going to make its way out. We'll have to see what kind of damage Boxer is going to be able to do. Lucky already has two Zerglings out on his own. One Spine Crawler also coming up, of course, just in case there are more Hellions on the way. And hmm. it looks like that Hellion is going to get one kill for now. This is a pretty interesting opening from Boxer. I mean, it's, it's the standard opener that we see from a lot of Terrans, but with a little bit of flare on it. Still getting that quick stim, a Marine here as well, but only getting three Hellions uh, instead of the you know four to six that we see out of a lot of other players. And I'm not sure where he's gonna transition to from here. He does have that expansion going up on the low ground. Gonna get that second orbital, and this Overlord is gonna make its way all the way in and figure out exactly what's going on. And that Boxer Overlord space. is so crucial, man, for the Zerg player. Gotta know exactly what the Terran or the Protoss is always up to. I love how he gets the Overlord in there. However, Boxer gonna go ahead and construct the rest of his buildings on the left as he works that Overlord down. So most likely that Overlord will not get in to see the additional factor or the, the additional barracks coming up right now. So uh, Lucky most likely still in the dark. He's still dealing with those Hellions at the outside of his main. And look, we see the reactor powering happening once again. Mm. Swapping that uh, reactor that was already built, building or constructing a racks there, constructing another reactor, which I can only assume is gonna be for this barracks once it finishes. Um, I really like that style. You can skimp on early units in the early game and then 
just power units as soon as you get all of your add-ons on the Raxes. It works out very nicely. The beauty is all the reactors come up at the essentially the same time, so you've, you're going to get this kind of jump start in production uh, in about a minute, and then Marines are just going to start to flood the field and almost as quickly as a Zerg can produce units. A look at that once again, powering another reactor there, swapping that Rax onto one and, and constructing an additional reactor for this starport. So. Boxer going to get the early stim timing and he's going to get the added production. This is almost a cross between the two builds that we saw Alive do, actually. Mm. The first game we saw Alive uh, tech into tanks and power up reactors very hard, tried mm -hmm. to hit those, those two timing pushes. Then the second game, we saw Alive go for a very quick starport uh, with three Raxes and an early stim timing. Mm. Boxer is getting a quicker starport, but he also has more production than Alive had in the second game. And I actually like this hybrid build that he's using. Now, the interesting thing here is Lucky is really prepared for a medevac drop here. I am really interested at the way how he's spreading the creep. Rather than spreading it down on the low ground, which he is beginning to do right now, he initially took the liberty to spread it inside his main. Now, what does this do? Not only does this cover and saturate your entire main and creep, thereby allowing you to deal with medevac drops, it also eventually allows you to drop the creep tumor down to the low ground and spread creep outwards in this fashion. So. Uh, Lucky is going to have creep spread going from all angles from his base, and I really like this kind of creep spread style. That's actually a really good point. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't see a lot of Zerg players do this, mm -hmm. especially sending the creep, you know, at these odd angles in the main just to cover everything fully to help deal Hold with that. Hold that We do have some Marines coming in here. They're launching their stim. They have a pre-stimmed here, but it looks like that stim is going to go to waste. However, that means Marines will get over there a little bit quicker. Is Lucky prepared for this? Once again, late bailing nest here, later bailing nest than usual, you would expect. And maybe Lucky is in a little bit of trouble if he Boxer decides to commit. He should have enough after this next cycle of lings. We see 18 more lings joining right now. And Baneling speed just now starting. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not going to be up before any kind of potential commitment from Boxer. But I really like how Lucky hasn't taken his third yet. Mm. Uh, he's, he's playing such a cautious style. He's getting out a ton of lings. This is going to mean that when he takes his third, it's eventually going to be much safer than, you know, if he had taken it right there. You know what's really cool, too, is, uh, you know, I'm sure Boxer was thinking, hey, I can elevate her into the main. Not really. Not with all that creep that's going on right now. That would certainly be a very suicidal thought to go for. Uh, so now Lucky's just doing great for himself. He's on two base. You mentioned before you like how he hasn't expanded yet. I, I still think a third expansion at some point in this game is going to be very, very crucial. Now, given the way the creep has spread, I wonder if he's going to expand here or if he's going to take the more uh, normal expansion, which it looks like he's going to go for. Yeah, he, he already grabbed the uh, normal one. Mm -hmm. Boxer controlling mid right now with this small group of Marines, Medivacs, and Hellions. I actually really like that. Mm -hmm. Has a Hellion on each Zell Naga Tower. And He's just not allowing Lucky to take control of the Zelnagas. Look at yeah. this Zergling from Lucky here that could potentially scout the Medivacs coming out of the main. Yeah. I really, really like that. Just overall intelligent play here from both these players showing why they're so good. I mean, Lucky, of course, qualifying from the open stage. Boxer coming from the group stage. Both of them highly prestigious, very, uh, very talented StarCraft II players in their own right. Um, now, we do have Lucky grabbing the double gas right away. So he really wants to get that gas intake going. We saw Hey Pro in the last game starved out of gas, never had enough to really go down all the tech routes he wanted to go for. That's not the case here for uh, for Lucky because he, he played on two base a little bit more before grabbing that quick greedy third and he's going to have a nice number of mutalisks and banelings on the field. Yeah, I agree. He, he's getting that gas up and also um, because he's making this transition to mutas, he's going to need the extra gas. It's yeah. very important wow, for him. He's going to go in here and pick off a couple of the SCVs building the turrets as well as just delaying the third a little bit more. He runs into a couple of turrets inside the main and it looks like the mutalisk will be deflected. That's a lot of turrets that are up for Boxer. Yeah, wow. Boxer very, very concerned with the Muta Harass right now. He has turrets everywhere. I love his building positioning, though. And oh here we go. The Baneling's going to head in towards the tanks. But three tanks, I feel, is enough for Boxer to deal with that small Absolutely. Ling Baneling army right there from Lucky. Yeah, and this is the thing that a lot of Terran players love about this map. The center of the map, the side, the, 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 the middle north side and the middle south side here, very easy to just channel and funnel in Zerg units. And it's extremely good for Terran players to just siege up all their tanks in the middle and, and very simple to just cut the map in half and start to expand at will. Yeah, very true. Now, Boxer just content to hold on to mid here. He, he's really established his position in the middle of the map. Yeah. 
This gives him split map opportunity, so yeah, he can, so he can take an earlier fourth here. He's going to be relatively safe to do so. Uh, he's done a great job macroing thus far, 161 supply to 152 for Lucky. And anytime you can out macro a Zerg at this stage in the game, you're doing a pretty good job. And all of these turrets that he's invested so heavily in are really going to start to pay off because this Mutaflock is, is getting <laughs> to be a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, and I don't think the Mutalists are going to be able to harass any mineral lines no. at all with all the amount of turrets that are up, uh, which means that Boxer doesn't have to worry about running Marines back into the main. He can just rely on the turrets Baneling and the bomb, new Marines that come Baneling out. Bomb. There's a Baneling bomb! It looks like... Didn't hit it. Didn't hit it. Okay. It was pretty close, though. Right. And look at the spread here from Boxer. <laughs> doing a great job with his Marines right now. Is he going to target those Banelings oh down? Oh my god, he's going to lose a couple of tanks at the front, microing the Marines to the back. The Banelings exploding on some of the Marines. Very well great done. great job by uh, Boxer, I feel like, holding that line. I don't think he has enough to, to do any serious damage here, though, but he does there have a drop, drop going on at the fourth. He's dropping the main at the exact same time. Is he going to pressure the front wall doing all of this? He might be able to oh, get that hatchery. He's going to get the hatchery. Looks like the Marines were not on target fire. They started to get distracted by the, Zing the Zerglings as they came in, and the hatchery is going to stay alive. That's a huge win for Lucky. Yeah, Lucky's actually doing a really good job uh, dealing with all these drops. He's going to hold the drop in the main, too, without losing a single queen. Both wow. those queens get down in the deep, deep red. <laughs> Boxer was re-macroing this entire time, though. He has additional tanks now. He has additional Marines as well. And he is probably going to hit another timing here. Look at that beautiful flock from Lucky, though. Absolutely. Uh, really starting to hit those, those scary numbers. Now, it would be nice at some point in this game for Boxer to maybe eventually make that transition into the army. And Thor, uh, Thor of course, forces the Zerg's Medalist to not remain clumped up to snipe off tanks and Marines anymore. Rather, they have to do the magic box trick. Looks like the Marines may pick off that hatchery. Wow, that was a close one. 62 HP and the Mutalisks and Lings able to save the day. But another medevac drop going off in the main. At the same time, Boxer, Boxer launching another attack in the middle of the map. Yeah, but Boxer needs to be really careful here because all of these drops are actually getting cleaned <laughs> up relatively easily. And, you know, he's not inflicting oh, a lot of Mutalist damage. Oh, the Mutalisk going into those Marines. Lucky with a huge blunder right there, losing a large majority of his Mutas. Yeah, and that, that was uh, a very, very expensive flock of mutas to lose right there. He's coming in with everything right now. Going to try and surround these Marines. Great micro from Boxer off the creep, and he is going to come out ahead in that battle. Yeah. He can push now. He has two additional tanks joining. We see another Baneling Bomb set up here from Lucky, though. He's, mm. he's a very tricky, tricky Zerg. He keeps trying to <laughs> land this Baneling Bomb. Trying to but Boxer, the jackpot, man. Boxer, one step ahead of him, going to double drop again, and he really wants that hatchery at the fourth. It is down to 84 hit points right now. He's going to continue to drop down there oh. until he can get it. And he's actually trying to distract the Zerg at the main as well, and it looks like those uh, Marines are going to go down. Meanwhile, he might get it. that medevac dropping it. the Marines off the hatchery. Is it going to get a transfuse? There's not enough energy, and the hatchery goes down. A huge victory right there for Boxer, as now the Zerg player is limited to Look only three Baneling bases bomb. of mining. There is a Baneling bomb in the middle of the map, as you said, Pain User, and we just saw Lucky selecting his Banelings, just waiting, he's waiting. He's like, please walk your Marines over the Banelings. But Boxer is just prepared. I don't think he's going to you know, give uh, a lucky, that lucky jackpot. I don't think he knows about them, though. It's just a matter of, of him deciding to move out over them or if he takes a different route. I think mm. he might oh. actually head over those. If he scans ahead, that would actually be brilliant. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he did find the, the original Baneling Bomb, so he knows that Lucky is the type of player to use uh, who bombs. likes to use Baneling Bombs. Yeah, and this map is actually really good as well. Uh, you can place Banelings in anticipation of the Terran push, which really only has a few lanes uh, since this map is so centralized. And now we do have Mutalist coming in through the south again. Once again, a quad turret wall here as the fourth turret is coming up with Marines ready and waiting. I do not see these Mutalists doing any damage at all, and they are going to turn tail and run. Boxer doing a great job uh, just controlling the map right now. He has yeah. such a good game sense. He's playing such a smart game right now. He's denying all of the Mutalist harass. He's holding this position in mid. He's been dropping all over the map, keeping Lucky occupied, keeping him bouncing back and forth. So Lucky really hasn't had any opportunities to do damage of his own. 
Well, Lucky's certainly still been doing a great job of holding on to this game despite losing one of his hatcheries. Oh, he's trying he's to bait him onto the, the Baneling Bomb. The mar the mar oh, oh my god, this is too much. are getting very close and oh my god! All the Marines going down! <laughs> oh my god. Lucky hitting that jackpot and now that's gonna give him the go-ahead to run right down the middle. Boxer could end up losing his entire tank contained. That was so smart right there, yeah. waiting for the perfect opportune moment and he has oh, more no. than enough to clean up the remainder of Boxer's contain on the midfield right now. He is just plowing his way through mid. He killed all the Marines. All that remains is these three siege tanks. Boxer does have a bunker here at the third, and that could end up saving him. He needs to mass repair that bunker, mm. and that will get rid of the Mutalists, but he's wow. lost all of his siege tanks here, and at this point in the game, siege tanks are such high-value units. They yeah. take so long to produce. He really couldn't afford to lose all those there. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more, man. And now a bunch of beanlings being morphed in to replace the ones that went down. Uh, Lucky here is going to have an opportunity to maybe just crash right through that planetary fortress and limit the Terran to only three bases. And at the same time, he can grab his fifth, his fifth and sixth at the same time as well. Meadle is just poised here to take off any new tanks that come out of the field. And of course, that means Boxer is constricted to the back of his uh -oh. natural and he can't support Boxer's this fourth. expansion. And Boxer's fourth is about to go under siege. The Baneley's going right into the mineral line oh, and around that planetary as well. And the PF goes down. That could be an irrecoverable blow to Boxer at yeah. this point in the game. He's not very saturated on his natural or his third right now. Uh, SCV count down to 51 versus the 85 drones of Lucky right now. Mm -hmm. And Lucky, with I dare say a Lucky Baneling Bomb, getting himself <laughs> back into this bomb, game. Right? I mean, that killed a majority of Boxer's <laughs> Marines right there. And the Mutalists were able to just clean up as a result of that. Mm. I, I feel like without that Baneling Bomb, he wouldn't have been able to run over Boxer like that. It wouldn't have even would, gone down like that at all. Yeah, it would have been a totally different game. Uh, Boxer, no doubt about it, would have been able to contain the, the Zerg for a much longer time. He could have continued to expand. But as it stands, he <laughs> lost half of his Marines, and, and, and Lucky just got to go ahead to crush him. Here comes Lucky from behind in mid right now. Boxer was pretty well set up for that, though, and I yeah. think he might actually be able wow. to clean this up. And if you saw Boxer moving through mid right there, he, he dropped four scans on the way through mid. He is so <laughs> worried about oh, another Baneling Oh, he's got to be careful here. He can't lose these Marines to those Banelings. Great split here, just leaving little packs of Marines behind, and the reinforcing Marines are going to join the fray. He may actually have enough to repel those Mutalists, which, good lord, those Mutas, that flock is huge. It's gone to the second control group now. It certainly has. Mm. These tanks really want to hold their position in mid. He continues yeah. to pour on all of his reinforcements. He's actually rallied all of his buildings straight to mid. Boxer does not want to give this position up. He needs to retake his fourth, though, because Lucky is going to continue to oh, harass man. with this giant Mutalist pack, and he is yeah. doing so much damage right now. He's working off of five, six base, six gas, fully mm. saturated, so he can, he can afford to lose uh, a pretty substantial mute account and, and just reproduce it, rebuild it. His his income is ridiculous right And now. unfortunately, you know, having the quad turret wall and the, and the many multiple redundant turrets all over the map, eventually that mutal flock is going to get so large that it doesn't really matter how many turrets you have. They they can go in and snipe the turrets off one by one and start to harass your mineral line. Yeah, I mean, I mean, look at the income right now for Lucky. He has over 1,300 gas oh, income. Oh, the Baneleys are coming in once again. The tanks are in a great position, but it doesn't look like... Uh, Lucky has oh. enough. Lucky getting a, lot a great of Marines bailing hit. Went down right but it there, looks though. like Boxer still has enough Marines to maybe take off this hatchery. The Marines are here fighting against that huge flock of Mutas. They are able to keep the Mutas away, and the hatchery is going to go down. Boxer with a huge victory at the same time grabbing another expansion. Yeah, but he's lost. Uh, well, he's lost so many SCVs. He really needs yeah. to get a fourth up and running. He doesn't. Where is he going with all of his SCVs right now? Oh, he knows that the Muta pack is headed over there. There's yeah. no turrets. He's going to have to evacuate that position scene, man. entirely. And I mean, yes, Boxer just had a huge victory there, but look at the supplies. 78 to 197 right now. Lucky is just a beast of a macro zerg. He took the entire map mm. by the 20 minute mark. He was working off of six hatcheries, fully oh, satched. Oh, Boxer not paying attention to those Marines there, ends up losing his pack, which could have potentially done some damage to that mineral line. Uh, he is going to try to get out of here with his two medevacs, but they will meet their demise at the hands of those glaive worms. And right now, Boxer trying to get back in this game. He's only down to two bases now. One of them is only mining. Uh, 
It certainly does not look good at all for our Terran Superstar, as Lucky is poised to take this game. His Muta block now is just absolutely enormous. And there is the GG from Boxer. Uh, well, yes. I think that game really came down to that Baneling Bomb. That was when Boxer was trying to make his move. I feel like that's when Boxer had his biggest advantage throughout the game. And that was a beautiful, beautiful maneuver there from Lucky. I, d I don't want to say that that 